sons, their gods. Who is like? Sing it to him. Glorious in holy days. Let him hear your voice. Sing to the King of Kings, you are the His presence is here tonight. You are there, more fair than the leader goes by the way. You are precious, more precious than gold. You are fair, more fair. Then the lily that grows by the way, you are precious, more precious than gold. You are precious, more precious. You are precious, more precious. You are precious. More precious than gold. Sharaba kata baraba kusora made. Serebeta maholo somai. Let me teach briefly on dealing with witchcraft and household wickedness. Amen. This, this is last, these are the last days. If you want to stand for God, stand for God. Compromise is one of the baits that the enemy uses to lure us. Once you begin to compromise, you are trapped in the realm of the flesh. And in that realm, you cannot exercise your authority in Christ Jesus. No. An eagle does not prevail over a snake by coming to the ground. No. The best way to defeat that snake is to take it to the realm where the eagle is, has mastery. May God help us in Jesus' name. Deuteronomy 18 verse 10 to 12. Deuteronomy 18. I try to be as fast as I can and then we are going to pray. I want us to pray, pray for some time and then I'll just... He said, there shall not be found, you can sit down, please. You guys sit down. There shall not be found among you anyone who makes his son or his daughter pass through the fire, or one who practices witchcraft. Emphasis on the word witchcraft. Or a soothsayer, or one who interprets omens. Or a sorcerer. Or one who conjures spells. Or a medium, or a spiritist. Or one who calls up the dead. For all who do these things are an abomination to the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord your God drives them out from before you. Now, God was speaking to the children of Israel shortly before they would enter the promised land. And God began to talk to them and to give them laws that will govern them as a nation and as a people separated unto him. By this time, the first generation that left Egypt had died. These were the offspring of that generation. These were those who were born on their way out of Egypt. And that's the reason why the word Deuteronomy means second law. And in this law, God emphasized clearly where we read. That amongst them, they shall not be found those who are given to witchcraft. That means that witchcraft is an abomination before God and is something that God does not tolerate. What is witchcraft? The word witchcraft are two words put together. Witch means to bend or to divert. 
which means to bend or to divert. Craft is like a product, a masterpiece, an artifact, something that is produced. So if you say an aircraft, it's a product that can fly. A craftsman is someone that uses his natural skill or talent to produce or to fabricate something. That means that witchcraft will be what I would call the demonic technology that brings about the diversion of the destiny or the life of an individual. Of course, this diversion is negative in itself witchcraft therefore will be a demonic technology that wrongfully diverts or bends the destinies of men using illegitimate or counterfeit authority i want to explain illegitimate or counterfeit authority because when god created man not christians when god created man he gave man dominion over the earth and over all the works of his hands on earth so man naturally has dominion that's authority even though as a believer you will function in the fullness of that authority because you are now connected to the one whom gave you that who gave you that authority and you realize that God did not create man to be dominated by anybody. So anytime a person or an individual is forced to do things beyond their wish or their will, it means that illegitimate authority has been usurped. It's either you usurp the authority from that victim by intimidating the person, by manipulating the person or spirits demon spirits take advantage of the authority that the man has i hope you are listening to me demon spirits can take advantage of the authority that a man has because that man is man and you know that spirits don't have authority on earth the bible says in psalms 115 verse 16 that the heaven of heavens belong to god but the earth he has given to the sons of men. So for a spirit to find expression on earth, it needs to borrow the authority that a man has. It needs to be licensed with authority by a human figure. That human figure is going to be the bridge between the realm of the spirit, the demonic now, and the physical in other words that human figure will be a medium and a witch is a medium so illegitimate authority that is used in witchcraft is either the witch forces or compels either through manipulation or intimidation or any other means possible there are about six ways by which they practice that but I don't have time to talk about that because we are not going to talk about the broad aspect of witchcraft. We are going to deal with witchcraft that is related to family or ancestry. If we are going to discuss about witchcraft, it may take us three Sundays. Because there are different kinds of witchcraft. There is witchcraft as the nature of the flesh, the fallen nature of man. Man that lives his life in the flesh. One way or another you will find, you may have found yourself trying to take advantage of people beyond their will is that true there are different kinds of witchcraft there is household witchcraft there are territorial witchcrafts because the word witchcraft in scripture is always used with the plural s there is even church witchcraft but we will not talk about all that because we are not concerned about the general i came here tonight because god wants to bring an end to the atrocities of family witchcraft So it's either the, the witch compels the victim 
beyond their wish or their desire or the witch is partnering with a spirit and that spirit is taking advantage of the natural authority that that individual has as a man to victimize people do you understand that malachi chapter sorry micah chapter 5 verse 12 micah chapter 5 verse 12 it says i will cut off sorceries give us in new in king james and i will cut off witchcraft out of thy hand and thou shalt have no more thou shalt have no more soothsayers so the soothsayers are empowered by the manipulations and by the operations of witchcraft a human medium that transacts with the demonic side of the realm of the spirit to inflict evil and wickedness on people that is witchcraft is in everybody's family I don't care if you were born and you were na you nationalized in Britain and you know how to speak the Queen's English you went to school in London and your university was in Manchester witchcraft is witchcraft it is everywhere as a matter of fact witchcraft is an English word say amen, amen. all right so this has nothing to do that you don't approach these studies with sentiment witchcraft is real it's as old as the bible and if we don't deal with those forces some of you will not know that that cycle of pain that you have been going through in the last 5 10 15 years is sponsored by an activity of witchcraft you see witchcraft eh, part of the way is sources is power is true secrecy so a witch can hide within a vicinity within a family and as long as he or she is not exposed they will keep perpetuating evil after evil i want to show you some facts common facts about witchcraft write this down number one god hates witchcraft god hates witchcraft Exodus 22 verse 18 He said thou shalt not suffer a witch to leave The word suffer is the word allow In Leviticus 20 verse 27 He even describes the punishment for witches And I hope you forgive me this night Because I want to implement that punishment He said a man also or woman That had a familiar spirit you know the word familiar is from the spanish word fami familia which is family so when we talk about familiar spirit we are talking about spirits that operate with families are you hearing me or oh, that is a wizard shall surely be put to death they shall stone them with stones their blood shall be upon them who is talking is god number two Wickedness is the root of witchcraft. Wickedness is the root of witchcraft. In fact, prolonged affliction in the life of a man is one of the surest signs of witchcraft. If you find an individual who is going through a prolonged season of pain, of affliction, of trouble, whether financially, whether in their family, whether spiritually, all kinds of torment. When it looks as if wickedness seems to be prolonged in a, in a life or in a family. That's a sign of witchcraft. At that point, you don't need a prophet. Somebody is somewhere ensuring that the work of darkness is perpetuated. And as I talk right now and look at our wonderful and beautiful faces inside and outside, I submit to you that if you take a look at your life right now, scan your life in the next one, two minutes, you will be able to point out certain ugly situations that probably you don't even understand how they came into your life or why they are happening. And you will have to agree with me with this night. I respect your theology, I respect your education, I respect your 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 your, your being learned. 
But brothers and sisters, witchcraft is real. Wickedness. God knows why he said witches should die. The reason is because when a human being, man or woman, begins to transact with wicked spirit, I hope you know that that spirit, the characteristic of that spirit will find expression in that human being. And every time demon spirits were addressed in scripture, they were often addressed as wicked or unclean. There is no way a person is possessed by wicked spirits and the person will be good. That's why we have to do this deliverance. Number three. Number two, I said what? Wickedness is the root of witchcraft. Number three. There are three departments in the kingdom of darkness responsible for human demonic alliance. I don't know how you write that one, but find a way to write it. There are three departments responsible in the kingdom of darkness. They are responsible for human demonic alliance. I'm saying this because I want to show you where witchcraft falls. Witchcraft is one of the departments. Department number one, divination. Divination is that department in the kingdom of darkness. Remember, I'm talking about human demonic alliance. All right? The conspiracy, the conglomerate of a human and a spirit. Divination is a department of knowledge, satanic knowledge. Now, God is the all-knowing God. As a matter of fact, there are three attributes that God has that he doesn't share with anyone. He's omnipresent, which is being that he's everywhere at the same time. He's omniscience, he's all-knowing, and he's omnipotent, he's all-powerful. God knows everything. Satan is not omnipotent science and as a result of that satan has a very strong and complex network of demons and spirits these spirits are attached to individuals to families i'm not what i'm saying is not nigerian female i hope you know as you are listening to me you are not hearing a story you are this is real by the time i begin to go down and bring out examples some of you will respectfully speaking begin to see that you are already victims of witchcraft but that's why you came here on this mountain. That in the name of Jesus Christ, whatever may be responsible for the wickedness or atrocities around your life, that tonight will be your night of deliverance and emancipation. So divination is the department in the kingdom of darkness responsible for knowledge. Satan attaches spirits with families, with individuals, with nations, with cities. Sorcery works with wisdom. Knowledge is information. So those spirits, familiar spirits, will work with human agents. And they can source information. Unfortunately, we have many people now who have crept into the body of Christ. Who source information about people using this familiar spirit. Just because the information the person said is correct, doesn't mean the person is operating by the Holy Ghost. Truth is not accuracy of information. Truth is not accuracy of speech. Truth is probing the source or the spirit behind that utterance. Because I will show you in the book of Acts chapter 16. That that lady was always going after Paul and Silas and the other disciples. These are the men sent by the most high God. Who have come to show us the way of salvation. Bishop is there any problem with that statement? At least they have gotten endorsement. You know what it means to labor in a new place. You know what it means to plant the church in a new territory. You will keep praying for God to send you helpers. And now of all the helpers, God has sent a powerful prophetess who is even witnessing to people. So people can, ah, oh, these guys are powerful servants of God. And that's easy publicity. And that, that's the problem. Some of us this night, you need to be delivered from seeking affirmation from human beings. From seeking affirmation from pastors. From seeking affirmation from people. The greatest affirmation you can get is the witness of the spirit in you. But the spirit bearer witness in us. In our spirit that we are case closed. 
when God spoke to me about this work and this assignment 10 years ago, I didn't, I, like Paul, I didn't confer with flesh and blood. If on the way anybody spoke to me, thank you very much. It is true. But it, do, it doesn't in any way validate what is in my heart. So you need to learn how to hear God for yourself. Some of you say, but Apostle, I'm in business. Don't you think hearing God should be the assignment of the pastor? Ah. Oh, Apostle, I'm about to travel out. Don't worry, that's why we have you here. Just be hearing God for us. We'll be sending our seed and our offering our tithe. Thank you, I will receive it. But brother, you need to know God for yourself. Oh. Correctness of information. Don't be deceived by that. They can get it correct A to Z and you are looking at the agent of a familiar spirit. I don't have time. We'll not teach about it now. I will maybe... If God permits, the year runs out, we will show you how you can know beyond the utterance. Just the way that lady came to me and was crying that there's problem, there's problem. I would have just foolishly gone there and started praying that, oh, every demon over our finance. Which demon? You are sleeping around and you are saying demon over your finance. That's why if you are, if you are called into ministry, whatever the ministry, you have to trust God for discernment to the deception is on high gear. I'm telling you, Satan will transform himself as an angel of light. You have to probe beyond the face, beyond the wivon, beyond the makeup, even the beards. Because I, I, it's like I heard that ladies like bearded men now. I'm no offense to you, it's okay, but you have to pure, probe beyond that beard. Did I touch somebody? You know I still love you, right? Why are you looking at that young man with beards near you? Probe beyond the beards. Tell your neighbor, probe beyond the beards. Tell them again, probe beyond the nails. And the makeups and everything. Yes, so, brothers, let me advise you. Probe before you bring them here. Probe. Pray. Check the foundation. Check beyond the statement. Beyond that love text message. Love does not mean we should be blind to discernment. Give us Philippians chapter 1 verse 9. True love is love that is concentrated with spiritual discernment. He said, and this I pray that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and judgment. If you read New King James, he said discernment. That means if you are truly in love, you must get sense. Get sense. Get sense. Don't worry, I'm coming. We are going to, we are going, we are going to talk about bewitchment. You are laughing, but I want you to really take this seriously because we will pray this night, oh, and any human human medium around your life any witch that has been hiding in the shadows responsible for your pain for your setback for the recycling of your torment by the fire of the holy ghost they go down this night i said they go down this night in the name of jesus christ So we have divination, we have sorcery. Sorcery has to do with wisdom. Now, wisdom is different from knowledge. Knowledge is information. Wisdom is um, the way by which problems are solved. Knowledge is informative. Wisdom is directive. So you will tell the wisdom of an individual by the things they do. Is that true? So when they begin to show you ways other than that which is prescribed by scripture as means through which you can solve certain problems or through which, for instance, they take you to a place and they give you ring and say, anytime you write an exam with this ring, you will pass. Or they give you something to drink and they say it's love portion. Or anytime you speak, anybody that you talk to will follow. That, that is sorcery, high level sorcery. I don't care even if they write Psalms 1 to Psalms 150. That is sorcery. Then the third department is witchcraft. Divination is the knowledge department. Sorcery is wisdom department. Witchcraft is the power department. That's why you don't play with witchcraft. Number four, 
common facts about witchcraft. Witchcraft erodes peace. Erodes. E-R-O-D-E-S. Erodes peace. If there is witchcraft operation in a life or in a, in, in a vicinity, in a community, some of you may have, I don't know if there are people here, you may have lived in a particular place where you sense a lot of evil and wickedness. I don't know if there's anybody like that here. You have lived in a particular neighborhood where you just know the atmosphere is not right. There's too much evil. From night till the next day, birds are crying, animals are crying, this one, as though they cannot sleep as well. That's witchcraft. Anytime you find the operation of witchcraft, there cannot be peace. Second Kings chapter 9, what did he say in verse, 20, verse 23? There can't be peace. That's why for you to get peace this night, some witches must go down. Twenty-two, rather twenty-two. Now it happened when Joram saw Jehu that he said, "Is it peace, Jehu?" So he answered, "What peace? As long as the hollow trees of your mother Jezebel and her witchcraft are so many, how can there be peace when there is witchcraft? How can there be peace when somebody has tied the destiny of the five of you, the five of you siblings? You are praying in tongues every day." But unknown to you, somebody tied your destiny and kept it under a tree. Just because you pray in tongues every day does not mean every situation is solved. I want to help you with your theology. It is true that the Bible says we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit maketh intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. But you will need to understand that there is a difference between praying with the Spirit and praying in the Spirit. In Ephesians 6 verse 18, when Paul was talking about warfare, he said that we should pray always with every prayer and supplication in the Spirit, not with the Spirit. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 14 to 15, Paul said, if I pray with an under my understanding, he said, my, if I pray with my with an unknown tongue, my spirit is praying, but my understanding is unfruitful. He said, what is it then? I will pray with the Spirit. That is pray with the spirit. But when it comes to warfare, Paul said pray in the spirit. Praying in the spirit is beyond praying with the spirit. Praying in the spirit includes number one, praying with the spirit. Includes number two, praying with the right heart. So you can't have miles and be in a season of warfare. They will hit you hard. Praying with, in the spirit also means praying by the direction and the leading. There are times where you need to pray strategic prayer. Why we pray in the spirit is so that the spirit of revelation can be activated. And then the Bible says that it will fill you with the spirit of revelation and wisdom in the knowledge of him. And as a result, they say your eyes, the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened. So that you are not given to ignorance. After all, Saul was anointed, but he still went to consult witchcraft. Yes or no? Let me just help somebody this now, because some of us, we have, we have deliberately avoided this aspect. And I told you last week, I said that, you see, the Bible is like a university. When you enter that university, there are different faculties. Faculty of medicine, faculty of arts, faculty of engineering. Is it right for one faculty to say, we are better than the others? All of those faculties represent different branches of human endeavors. But every one of them are important. Because if you graduate as an engineer and you know nothing about economics or accounting, you will work and remain poor. Yes or no? Aha. Uh -huh. So that's how the Bible is. Different doctrines, different teachings, different revelations. You must not appreciate one alone. You must appreciate all. Can we go on now? So when there is witchcraft, there can't be peace. It's either the finances are tied up. It's either there is a particular cycle of evil that you cannot explain. No matter how you try to fight against it, at that particular time that it always comes, it will come again. I know people who sleep and in their dream, people come to make love with them. Put anointing oil under the pillow put Bible under the pillow do everything 
But it doesn't stop that thing from manifesting. I know I've seen people who come out of a three days dry fasting. And the short sleep they had before breaking their fast. The spirit still appeared again and molested them. And you tell me there's no witchcraft involved? Is it that your prayers was, were powerless? Or were you not praying in the name of Jesus? And you added fasting to it. Something is missing. Spiritual intelligence. And as you grow as a believer, you must contend for light every day. We need the intelligence of the spirit to be able to combat and keep at bay the forces of darkness so that you can experience and enjoy your God-given dominion on the earth. What is Satan's mission according to John 10.10? 10? The thief cometh to steal, to kill and destroy. If Satan is bent on fulfilling that mission and he has spirits attached to every family, then there, there must be at least one human individual that has fraternized with those spirits. And those spirits, their assignment is to ensure that the threefold mission of Satan is actualized. And so you begin to rise in your career. Everything is going on fine. And you think that Satan is going to sit down and allow you like that. I'm not preaching fear into you. I'm trying to awaken a militant spirit inside of you today. I'm trying to awaken a regimental spirit inside of you. There are people that Satan is afraid of. When Satan knows that you are not ignorant of his devices. And he knows that you have understood the art of warfare. He doesn't disturb you. Are we ready to pray this night? Let's talk more about witchcraft. There are two kinds of witchcraft. Number one, passive witchcraft. Passive or innate witchcraft. This is the witchcraft that is as a result of the fallen nature of man. Where man fell, flesh took over. Flesh is the nature of sin that is in man. When we talk about flesh in this context, we are not talking about your skin. We are talking about the fallen nature of man that is now subjected to the law of sin and death. In Galatians chapter 5 verse 19, the Bible calls one of the works of the flesh to be witchcraft. That means that in every human being, in the fallen nature of every human being, there is that tendency to manipulate people, to intimidate people, to deceive people, to seduce people, to control people. It is there. And now institutions are taking advantage of it for branding purposes for marketing purposes yes or no don't behave as if you don't know what i'm talking about yes or no i will not call any organization because i know some of you are here so that tomorrow next sunday you still pay your tithe but you know what i'm talking about uh -huh. that's passive witchcraft number two active witchcraft active witchcraft is the one that goes beyond the human nature this is the one that involves the use of demonic power it has gone beyond just the weakness of a human nature. It's engaging demonic power now. Deliberate. This is deliberate witchcraft. Under active witchcraft, we have four manifestations. First of all, we have inherited witchcraft. So if your father or your grandfather was a witch or a wizard, that person has or may have inherited it. Another way is if your father or your grandfather or great-grandfather used to consult herbalists or were herbalists you have inherited it because just the way god is transgenerational in his covenant satan too is transgenerational in his covenant if one person is a medium in a family what that person has done is he has broken the covenant with satan so that from that person's lungs generation after generation there must be one person at least that will be raised to continue that demonic priesthood. Someone say inherited witchcraft. That means if you are here and then you have parents or grandparents who used to consult and consult, a man of God said, so, some of you, your parents will so consult oracles that they themselves have become oracles. You need deliverance. Respectfully speaking, you need deliverance. Number two, under active witchcraft, there is blind witchcraft. The person is a witch, he doesn't know. 
How, Apostle? Is it possible? Oh, yes. Why do you see evil people in your dreams? You fly five times in a week. And then you have tried to spiritualize everything to say, hey, but the Bible says that they shall mount up with wings as eagle. Uh, was, that a, was that the wing of an eagle? If you are to mount up with wings as an eagle, listen, eagles fly alone. So much so that if an eagle meets any bird in the skies, it has to be another eagle. No other bird flies to that height. But your own, you are flying with people. Which eagle? You see yourself in meetings you don't understand. You see yourself with people you can't understand. You see yourself in places. You have left that house 10 years ago, but you are still there. What are you doing there? That's blind witchcraft. You have been initiated. And remember, deception is one of the operations of darkness. Satan can so deceive. In fact, even the witches are being deceived. That's why they are perpetually in witchcraft. Satan has deceived them to think that he is all powerful. That's why you need to interview someone who has been in darkness and then later repented and came to the light. The things you will hear, they, 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 no, the deception is institutionalized. Many people feel, many Christians feel Satan is an illiterate. Satan, he doesn't know what, Satan is not a fool. Though. Satan is intelligent. When he was in heaven as Lucifer, he was called the light bearer. You know who a light bearer is? Demonic intelligence is so powerful. But the more powerful is the one that comes from the spirit of God. There is forced witchcraft. Forced, they, they initiated you by force. Grandmother is about to die and then she looks for one of her grandchildren. Forcefully initiates the lady. And the lady is 25 years and she doesn't understand her life. There is this uncommon and unusual anger and malice in her for people. So much so that she knows that if they don't hold her, sometimes she can kill the person. That's witchcraft. I know you are beautiful. I know you have a Christian name. I know you love God, but you need help today. That is witchcraft. First witchcraft. Somebody has to continue the, the mandate. Then there is willing witchcraft. The person willingly and deliberately signs up for the kingdom of darkness. That's what they do with Yahoo Yahoo. Oh, yes. But today, somebody will be delivered. Witchcraft involves two major kinds of operations. Witchcraft is operated or manifested in two major ways. Either as curses or spells. As a matter of fact, you will want to say these are like the operations of witches. This is how they manifest witchcraft. Either as a curse or as a spell. A curse. Curses are words inspired by demonic... Oh, sorry. Curses are words inspired by demons. Spoken to inflict pain or injury. Limitation or even death on the victim. Words inspired by demons. So behind and in between those words are demonic powers transmitted. Those curses placed on the life of people are meant to inflict pain or injury or even limitation and death. They are not able to go forward. They are handicapped in life. They are not able to perform to their fullest potential. Do you remember the story of Balak and Balaam in Numbers chapter 22 verse 5 to 6? What was Balak's request? He said, come and curse these people for me so that I can defeat them in warfare. He said, for I know that him whom you bless is blessed and him whom you curse is cursed. There are people who have been born with great, great destinies, but they are not performing according to their capacity. They are not functioning according to their full performance. In fact, some of them, even in the spiritual, they can't pray for long. If they start praying, they will sleep. And then all kinds of unexplainable weaknesses. That person could be under a curse. Those curses will come to bring limitation. They will come to bring hindrances. You can go forward, but you will not go far. You can rise, but there is a level you will not reach. So grandfather, for many years, built only one mud house. Father, 
worked for 35 years in civil service in civil service in fact there were times they posted him to abuja to portacourt wonderful place where there was money there were times he had millions after retiring 35 years later he has two bedroom flat alone in the village and one year after he retired the only car he bought broke down a cross was placed witchcraft because the reason why it is perpetual is because somebody is somewhere monitoring it which is like hunters they set trap and they stay back to watch it but today in the name that is above every other name for that person who is willing to believe this night every trap that has been set around your life around your finances around your career around your destiny some of you even around your ministry there may be somebody here the witches in your village in your hometown have sworn that no pastor will arise and now the hand of god is on your life but there are all kinds of battles i command that those battles come to an end today let, let those traps be destroyed this night in the name of jesus christ Believe me, it's true. They've sworn that nobody, nobody will serve God in this lineage. And now the hand of God is on your life. But you can't, from the day you answered or the day you acknowledge that God has called you, your life turned to another form. I told you that which, witchcraft is to divert, to bend. Something is wrong. Something is wrong. There, there are people that must answer for that. Otherwise, you will be anointed. Ah, First Corinthians 4 verse 9 to 10. Now, Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. And his mother called him. Do you know the meaning of Jabez? Jabez means he will cause pain. What kind of a curse is that? That is witchcraft. That means that Jabez may carry the favor of God around his life. And he will get to a place and be accepted. But after two weeks, that cause, he will cause pain. It begins to uh, manipulate the minds of the people. All of a sudden, the same people that hug you will chase you away. This person call you to help you. They drive you. The next person call you to help you. They drive you. And you have changed about four of them just this year. Something is wrong. I know your name is David. Like my brother David. I know, I know. It's, it's not about Christian name again. No. It's not even about whether you were dedicated. This is demonic technology. Real. I told you my story last week. I was to trap. The way I prayed this week. Eh, against this thing. And till Jesus come. All of these kind of prayers. Ancestral prayers. Which I will keep praying. Even if tomorrow I'm driving a Lexus. That's when I will even pray more. Are you hearing me? Because the Bible says that be sober and vigilant. For your adversary, the devil. Goeth around like a roaring lion. Christians don't sleep. You must wake up from being that sleepy giant that you are. He said, awake ye that sleepeth. Arise from the dead. You must be brutal and militant. Nobody rises to a notable height. Check your family now. Check where you are coming from. You do the math. Some witchcraft, I even community witchcraft. No young person around that community will amount to anything except they go out of that community. There was a man that was blind that Jesus prayed for. Jesus, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, who had the Spirit of God without measure. Nobody so. Jesus prayed for the blind man. The Bible says when they brought the man to Jesus, Jesus took him out of the city and prayed for him two times before he saw. When the man could see, Jesus said, don't enter that town again. Go elsewhere. What was wrong with the city? Community witchcraft. There are locations in this city. I don't mean to scare you. Don't run tomorrow and go and pack. But if you need to pack, go and pack. If you know you are not ready for warfare, go and pack and go to another place. Go to Goshen. Look for a Goshen. Or look for. <laughs> but tonight, if you are ready to fight, you will go there and challenge the powers of hell. 
There are locations in this city where nobody amounts to anything good. You know what I'm talking about. Go to that place. You will just see a particular pattern with all the youths, all the young people. It's as if nobody can break out of that place. I remember years ago, we went to pray. One of our brothers, he must be here. And I, I, I believe I'm saying the truth. I think I went with you. Went to pray for one of our brothers. His mother. She was afflicted and God healed her. And when I sat down with the mother and began to interview her, I discovered that the mother was part of a prayer band in her church. And one day God gave her a revelation and showed her that there were witches in the church. And you know, I told you that we don't have time. We could have branched into the different. God showed her that there are witches in the church. So she went to the prayer band leader and said, this is what God showed me. We need to pray. Not knowing that that, that was the chief witch. It's okay. You want to pray us out of here. Then they navigated some arrows into her body. Please help me celebrate God for Pastor K, our father. He's here. You're welcome. Please bring him. Bring him to the front. You're welcome, sir. I said the operations number one is how? Curses. They know how to inflict curse. These curses are backed up with demonic power. Then there are spells. Somebody say spells. Have you ever done something way back in primary school they call spellings? Spells are evil pronouncements or actions transmitting demonic power. Evil pronouncements or actions that transmit demonic power to bewitch a person. I said pronouncements or actions. Spells are different from curses, of course, because the reason for spell is to bewitch a person. To bewitch a person means to arrest the decision making ability or decision making process of that individual so that the person will not decide as per common sense or will not make the right decision. It's like you hypnotize a person. How many of you understand what I'm talking about? It's like you hypnotize a person. That's what a spell is meant to do. A curse will come to inflict injury and pain and all kinds of things. But a spell is meant to hijack your reasoning. Hijack your decision. Have you heard of people who entered a kekena pep, a tricycle? And that was the last thing they remembered when they entered. Somebody told me the story of a young lady who entered a tricycle. And the last thing she remembered was somebody blowing powder to her. And after that she didn't remember anything again. She woke up and saw herself in a building. She saw dead bodies all around her. And the killing spree was one by one, turn by turn. Where were they? In the middle of nowhere. The person was hijacked here in Meduguri. They found themselves somewhere around Abuja. That's a spell. It can be a pronouncement. As a matter of fact, there is one common instrument that witches use. I want to say it. I could talk about about 20 of them, but there's no time. But let me give you one. There is an instrument. I had to search it on Google today. It is called a figgy. E-F-F-I-G-Y. A figgy is the image, the constructed image of a hated person. So these witches understand point of contact. So if they hate somebody, and of course witches, they perpetrate what they do because of hatred. If a witch wants to deal with an individual, they get a baby doll or an image, something that represents that individual. And then using demonic powers, whatever they do to that image is what will happen to that person. May th there may be somebody here now, you have been experiencing a particular kind of pain on one of your legs for 10 years. Anytime they pray for you, the pain will go and come back later. You have taken medication, it will go and come back later. Could it be that you are under some form of spell? Maybe somebody is using an effigy against you. Or they can use needles and pierce the person's stomach. And the woman is pregnant. And at two months, she just bleeds out the pregnancy. Nothing just happens in this life. 
I didn't come here tonight to publicize Satan. I came here tonight to expose his atrocities and to make you realize that God has given us authority. The Bible says in Luke 10, 19, it says, Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon snakes and scorpions and over all, including witchcraft, over all the powers of the enemy. Anyone here that is a victim of a figgy, you are a victim of any instrument of witchcraft. Somebody is somewhere secretly and connivingly using an instrument with demonic power against you. That is the reason why you are suffering from affliction. You are suffering from pain in the name of Jesus Christ. We command that thing to be destroyed now. We command that thing to be destroyed now. In the name of Jesus Christ. very real believe me it is very real so anything that happens to that image is happening to the person you know the story of somebody from a family who a woman locked you know padlocks locked them three of them put them in an old calabash and kept them under the bed so those padlocks represent the destinies of the people as long as they are locked no matter what they do. And I told you that witchcraft is more potent when it is concealed. If it has not been revealed, it will be powerful. But the day that God shines light from heaven and it is exposed, that is why we still need the prophetic. In as much as there are a lot of games in the body of Christ now, and sadly speaking, this is mainly among young people. Sometimes I find it difficult to even go out because you, they suspect you as a young minister. Because every they just look at you and classify you as every other person. Every young minister now is into all kinds of dubiousness. In as much as we still have those games, we still need the prophetic. There are issues even if you pray from now till next year. It takes the prophetic eye of the spirit to see that padlock and to command it to be loosed. When Jesus healed the woman at the temple, woman thou art loose you remember the bible gave us insight that that woman there was a spirit of infirmity that made her bow for 18 years in our days now they would have taken her for all kinds of ct scans mri scans they would have done everything they would have even coined a name and doctors are very good they are doing their best but the truth is <laughs> there are some sicknesses that you just need to call it the name that fits it witchcraft No necrosis of the this, that, or this and that. Post-traumatic stress disorder. It's a demon. Call it. It's a demon. It's a demon there. Say amen. amen. And if you come to me as a pastor, I'll be praying deliverance for you while I still send you to the doctor. Are you hearing me? Because the Bible says they shall lay their hands on the sick and they shall what? Recover. When we get the spirit out, allow the medical people to do their job. But before you go there, spells. Let me give you some witchcraft vocabularies. First of all, there is something called witchcraft summons. Witchcraft summons. To summon means to call, to call up an individual. Witchcraft summon is when the issue about an individual is raised up among a band of witches. When they gather together for a meeting, they pull up discussions. Their discussion is actually on the lives of individuals. It's called witchcraft summons. Sometimes they can go as far as conjuring the spirit or the soul of that individual using a mirror. Now, this is now sorcery involved using a mirror using it i told you the story of that young man who traveled to his village and then the village before his village he packed his car pulled his clothes put his wristwatch his phone everything there and wore rags and entered the village to see his father and started crying and said you are not praying for me things are hard i'm struggling sorry the uncle the uncle said ah, ah, relax where your car he said no car things are struggling the uncle said come he carried water in the calabash, shook it, said some things. When the water cleared, the guy saw where he packed his car and everything inside. 
He said, go bring your car. Come, we'll not go chop you. That's why I am an advocate for powerful Christianity in this day. If witches can see like that, there should be a believer that can sit here in the night and see five people planning with your family name in the village and just execute them before the break of day. If witches can see like that, how about the Christians? But you know, we've, 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 we, we have given ourselves to drink conflicts, to drink oats, eat chicken, and, and there, there are times to enjoy. But there are times when you have to stand. Witchcraft summons. Number two, coven. The coven is a hub or a clan of witches. A coven is a hub or a clan of witches. They can meet at a particular place. The strength of a coven is when meetings are done at night. Now, depending on the class of witches, they can their numbers will vary. But when you have a group of witches coming together, especially to meet in a particular place, that's what we call a coven. Number three, witchcraft marks. Now, when they conjure a person up, it is important to know that the access that the witches will have against that person will be stronger if a family member of that person is involved in that coven. Now, remember I told you that witchcraft uses illegitimate authority, isn't it? They use sub authority. So, they cannot invade that individual's life except there is a family member that gives them access. That family member becomes the medium. So if they raise up the issue of Jonathan, Lagan, and anywhere they raise up issue concerning that name, I set it on fire now. Yeah. Well, that's the way to go about it. Any mark that has been placed on your body, allow us to finish today, but in the name of Jesus Christ, that mark is deleted by the blood of Jesus. That mark is deleted forever. There are witchcraft pots. If you read Micah chapter 3 verse 3, those are the pots they used to cook everything that they used to deposit in people. I don't have time, I've spoken deeply about witchcraft pots. Who also eat the flesh of my people, flay their skin from them, break their bones and chop them in pieces like meat for he said they are eating the flesh of who? My people. What else will you call this other than witchcraft? Witchcraft pots will lead me to witchcraft deposits. Witchcraft deposits are spiritual deposits that are made. Items that are placed inside of people. You call it a dream where you were eating in the dream. Somebody was giving you food to eat. Unknown to you that is witchcraft deposit. Now, they use that deposit to bewitch people. Satan understands law and order in the realm of the spirit. They need some form of access into the life of a person. If they cannot get the access physically, they will try to get it spiritually. So they violate, because demons are violators. They enter, that is why rape is sponsored by a demon. I know that. I know that. So they violate the, the, the spirit world or the spirit space around that person. The person saw it in a dream and thought it was not real. Not knowing that they were coming to give deposits. Now, most times if these deposits are in form of food, the moment the individual eats them, he has been yoked in a form of covenant to these witches. And by so doing, access has been created in his life. That is because... There are two outstanding activities in scripture that connotes covenant. One is food, eating. The other one is sex in the dream. When Jesus was about to go to the cross, what did he do with his disciples? Supper. He broke bread and gave them. He said, take it, this is my body. And because of that, they became one with him. 
That was why when he resurrected, the first thing he did when he appeared to them was he breathed upon them the Holy Spirit. Because they have become one by redemption, they had the access to receive the Holy Spirit. Sex too, the same thing. They are trying to create access. They are trying to attach spirits to that individual so that that person can be under that torment. I will give you two tricks. If you are suffering from that, two tricks that will help you come out of it. You know, the Holy Spirit is always downloading and giving to us wisdom by which we can overrule the affairs of darkness. If you have dreams where you eat in the dream again and again, this one the Holy Ghost gave it to me. I, I, don't, I, can't, I don't have time to give you scriptures, but just hear this and try it. It will work. If you eat in the dream and wake up, especially if it is frequent, when you wake up, pray in tongues if you can and cancel it. Neutralize that poison. That thing is poison. That deposit is poison. Neutralize it and don't eat till 12 noon. He said, ah, but apostle, they fry yam for kitchen. I can't explain. You know, there are things you can't explain spiritually. You, these things are is by practical experience you will get to know this i can't explain it but if you do that whatever they gave you is flushed out you try it then if it is sex in the dream i've been praying for god to give me a strategy out of it for people because you know by the privilege of god's grace you pray for people I, i've heard people complain this again and again Recently, the Holy Ghost gave me the strategy. He said, before you sleep, cover yourself with the blood of Jesus, your body. And declare that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. The blood is the last line of defense. Come on, somebody. Go and try it. We need to pray, we need to pray. I would have spoken about bewitchment. I've talked about it before. How that bewitchment is the activity of witchcraft to hijack the decision process, the decision making process of an individual. And let me tell you, this is not just an Old Testament thing. In Mark chapter 6, Herod's will was hijacked. Herodiah's daughter danced for Herod on his birthday. What kind of dance was it that a king would stand up? and pledge half of his kingdom kings were not fools particularly kings from the lineage of herod those guys were wicked are you hearing what i'm telling you that particular herod eh, killed his father to become king he was called herod antipas that was not the herod that was alive when jesus was born no 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 he killed his father and became king that was why when he when his father died when he had killed his father and died joseph went in the book of matthew the angel went to joseph in egypt and told him take this child back he said for they that seek his life are dead herod antipas killed his father and then he married the wife of his brother because there were three of them that were of royal blood and when i studied it very well i discovered that herodias actually had sexual relations with his father one time i did a studies on that so herodias was a grand witch she was the physical representation of jezebel what kind of dance is it that a king do you know what it means to have a kingdom you fight you take territories and then you want to offer it because of a foolish dance if not that that dance was seductive if not that that dance was 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 appealing suggestive i don't want to talk about it but truly when you begin to consider these things and the realm of the spirit how we interface with the realm of the spirit it will be good that a, a christian lady should dress decently full stop before you go and say i told you to wear a tie or wear mm -mm. it will be good because when you dress the way you dress attracts the kind of spirits around you spirits are atmosphere friendly so if there is a spirit of immorality he'll be attracted to a suggestive kind of dressing don't say i don't know eh, it's what i have it i hope it will be what you have when the demons are in you do you still love me please come back next week oh. 
I love, I love you. I'm sent to you. Herod was bewitched. And they killed the only prophet that, that, that Israel had produced at that time, John the Baptist. In Acts chapter 8, there was a man called Simon the Sorcerer. The Bible says he bewitched the people for a long time. So much that the people began to refer him as the great power of God. You know what that means? They began to look at him as the Messiah Jesus. Actually, that's what it means. They couldn't see that he was using evil powers. Hijack the thought process. You say the person is foolish. They behave like saying, no, no, what did they do? He has been bewitched. The young lady forgets all the young single brothers around. And is a married man she wants to accept proposed vow from. She has been what? Bewitched. Even if your name is Christiana, Angelica, all those things don't. Or a Christian brother sees somebody from the bonds, a, a child of the bonds woman, or even an unbeliever, and say, I will marry her. She will change by the grace of God. He has been what? Bewitched. What he saw was the eyelashes they used to bewitch him. And the mascara. And... I'm not saying don't wear it. Oh, wear it. Wear it. But I'm just telling you. So witchcraft is... Bewitchment is not an Old Testament thing. In fact, in Galatians chapter 3 verse 1, a church was bewitched. A whole church. A whole church. May God, God, Father, I pray... We, let's, let's intercede in one minute while you are seated I want you to pray for every church and every congregation in this city that the spirit of discernment will rest upon the churches let every form of bewitchment be arrested please pray we are about to get up now God will not allow Satan God will not allow Jezebel penetrate our churches penetrate our fellowships Penetrate our prayer groups. They come smiling, not knowing that they are witches. God will not allow them to take seats of position. In the name of Jesus Christ. We are about to pray. Stand on your feet. We have to pray. We have to just pray. I wish we had time to continue on and on and on, but I feel that we have to pray now. I would have talked to you about signs of bewitchment. What are the signs you can look at in somebody's life and know that the person is bewitched? But there is no time. But let me show you a scripture before we pray. Ecclesiastes 8 verse 11. Ecclesiastes 8 verse 11. Because I want us to be angry this night. If there's nothing wrong around your life, no problem. Pray for your neighbor. Or pray for your church members. Or pray for your, your colleagues in the office. Or pray for your friends. Are you ready to pray? Look at this scripture. It says, because the sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. It says, therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them. To do what? The reason why witches are thriving around your vicinity, around your family, is because the sentence against an evil work is not executed. What is the sentence to witchcraft? Death. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That was why at the beginning of the message, I say, I'm calling, and now I'm still going to call again. We will start praying. When we finish praying, I will start making declarations. If you know you are here, and you are a witch, please, while we are praying, just come out. So we'll pray for you. Because after the prayer, don't laugh, oh, don't laugh. Don't laugh. In seven days, you heard those testimonies here, right? When you begin to see manifestation, it's not a laughing matter. The Bible says, he that God has sent speaks the word of God. And to him, God gives his spirit without measure. To stand there and speak is not because I'm qualified naturally. It's because I've been authorized by God. That means that there is an immeasurable release of the spirit of God. Before we begin to declare judgment, because there are people amongst us here that your rising is connected to some people going down. Whether you like it or not. So if you are here and you are into practice of witchcraft in any way, whether you inherit it or whether you don't fly, you just crawl. I don't care. 
when we begin to pray please come out for deliverance because after that prayer there is a judgmental unction in this house i told you that the bible says the lord the lord is known by the judgment he executes are you ready to pray i want you to lift your voice in the next few minutes and say oh lord arise and let every form of witchcraft and household wickedness around my life collapse this night and forever lift your voice and pray in the name of jesus the bible says let god arise and let his enemies be scattered let this night bring an end to household wickedness. Let this night bring an end to witchcraft. Manipulations of witchcraft around your life, around your family. let God arise. Let God arise. Let Elohim arise. Let Elohim arise. In Jesus. Name we pray. Nahum chapter 3, verse 4 to 5. We're going to pray some brutal prayers this night. Want to pray against household wickedness. You know, that's the part of my teaching that I couldn't enter because of time. He said, because of the multitude of harlotries, of the seductive harlot, the mistress of sorceries. Look at this. Who sells nations through her harlotries? What is she selling? The destinies of nations are traded because of an exchange. He said, and families through her sorceries. The word sorcery, there is the word witchcraft. So the destinies of a family, of men in a family can be traded through witchcraft. Who sells? Are there people around your family whose destinies have been traded? Because of witchcraft is sponsored by what I call household wickedness. I don't have time. But if you read Genesis chapter 4, that's the beginning of household wickedness. A brother called Cain arose and killed his brother. In Judges chapter 9, you know the story of Joseph, Genesis 37. His brother said, let us kill him. Is it bad to dream? No. Is it bad to have great plans and great ideas about your future? Is it bad to dream big? No. But just because somebody dreamt big, don't you know that the success of Joseph will bring honor to the family? They say, no, let's kill him. So the one person trying to rise in that family, the witches come together and say, this girl we will frustrate her. They will go down this night. Oh. Judges chapter 9, a young boy called Abimelech. He was not even a legitimate son. He was the son of a concubine. He killed his 70 brothers on a stone. Why? Because of the throne. Second Kings chapter 11, there's a woman called Athaliah, the daughter of Jezebel. That's why I say he's inherited. Her son died. She stood up and killed all his children. The only person who was left was Joash because he was hidden in the presence of God. That's why the Bible says, you are my hiding place. Psalm 32 verse 7. It says, you are my hiding place. You surround me with songs of deliverance. In Psalm 31 verse 20, it says, you hide them in the secret place of your presence. From the plots of man, you keep them safe in a pavilion from the strife of tongues. May God hide you from wickedness. Are you ready to pray against household wickedness? Say after me in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every household wickedness. Every household wickedness. Every household power. Every household power. That is manipulating my life. That is manipulating my life. My finances. My finances. My destiny. My destiny. My siblings. My 
siblings, my loved ones, my loved ones, my family, my family, my church members, my church members, powers of ancestry, powers of ancestry, be arrested by fire, be arrested by fire. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I want you to pray with a brutal and aggressive. Arrest them by fire, O God. Arrest them by fire. Arrest them by fire. Arrest them be arrested, be arrested, be arrested by fire, by fire. He said, let those that hate God perish before his presence as wax is milk by the milk and the fire. Name we pray. Go back to Nahum chapter 3 verse 4. He said they sell families through witchcraft. They sell families. You are going to pray for everyone that is connected to you, yourself inclusive. Anyone's destiny that has been exchanged. You are not living God's version for yourself. You are living another man's version. It has been exchanged because of witchcraft. Today, let the power of God. I am batam barakata barakata. Thunder will blast this night, oh. Listen, Psalms 81, verse 7 say, You called upon me and I answered you from the secret place of thunder. I want you to say after me in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Over my life. Over my life. And anyone connected to me. Anyone connected to me. Anyone's destiny. Anyone's destiny. That has been exchanged. That has been exchanged. By the powers of household witchcraft. By the powers of household witchcraft. Anyone's glory. Anyone's glory. That has been changed. That has been changed. That has been substituted. That has been substituted. Let the power of God arrest them. Let the power of God arrest now, now, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, pray for two minutes. <laughs> Name we pray. Every witchcraft mark visible or invisible that is placed on you it is deleted by the blood of Jesus open your mouth and turn that to prayer some of you need to lay hands on your head any mark of witchcraft placed around my life to monitor my destiny to monitor my assignment to monitor my ministry to manipulate me to oppress me let down my fire 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 
Shall I say after me every coven every coven where my case is summoned where my case is summoned tonight tonight catch fire catch fire catch fire catch fire 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 in the name of jesus in the name of jesus open your mouth and pray bemba patos kapata shenanga papa papa bembe papa papa aburu to papa bemba jaskwa bembe papa bembe papa papa patu bembe papa papa escupa lata enganga tua ta Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I break. I break. I destroy. I destroy. And I neutralize. And I neutralize. Every curse. Every curse. Every spell. Every spell. Placed against my life. Placed against my life. By the powers of witchcraft. By the powers of witchcraft. I break. I break. I destroy. I destroy. I neutralize. I neutralize. By the fire of the Holy Ghost. By the fire of the Holy Ghost. Open your mouth and pray in the name of Jesus. In Jesus. Name we pray. Say after me in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every power of witchcraft. Every power of witchcraft. Or household wickedness. Or household wickedness. Diverting my resources. Diverting my resources. Be arrested by fire. Be arrested by fire. And tonight. And tonight. Whatever has been diverted. Whatever that has been diverted. Or stolen. Or stolen. From my life. From my life. Is restored now. Is restored now. Open your mouth and pray in the name of Jesus. Shut the da 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 da
Rimbanda Kubranda Brandos Kapradaba, Shabranda Kabala Brandi Kaba, Name we pray. Say after me, powers of wickedness. Powers of wickedness. Impersonating my image. Impersonating my image. To sabotage my destiny. To sabotage my destiny. Be arrested by fire. Be arrested by fire. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Somebody pray that. Somebody pray that. Somebody pray that. Powers of from your father's house, from your mother's house, powers of witchcraft, impersonating your image, to sabotage your destiny, to sabotage your rising, to sabotage your lifting, to sabotage your progress, be arrested now. In Jesus name we pray. Final prayer. We are going to pray against witchcraft powers that are responsible for profitless labor. Profitless labor or labor in vain. You have done everything. You try this one, it doesn't work. You try that one, it doesn't work. You try this one, it doesn't work. Nothing you do seems to be productive. Nothing you do seems to prosper. It's as if bad people begin to surface when you want to start business. When other people were doing business, they had good people around them. But the moment you started your own, all kinds of satanic emissaries coming around you. Are you ready to handle that? Profitless labor. That's why Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. Even in ministry, after you have suffered for a while, there is supposed to be fruit for you. Say unto the righteous, It shall be well with him, for he shall eat the fruit. When you labor as an elephant and eat as an ant, there's witchcraft involved. Are you ready to demolish it right now? Say after me in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every power of witchcraft. Every power of witchcraft. Or household wickedness. Or household wickedness. Causing profitless labor. Causing profitless labor. Or laboring in vain. Or laboring in vain. Over my life. Over my life. Over my family. Over my family. Over my ministry. Over my ministry. Over my career. Over my career. Be arrested now. Be arrested now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. She dumped in the water. She did it, did it, did it, God of vengeance won my battle for me. God of miracles has won my battle for me. God of vengeance has won my battle for me. I'm a winner man. I'm a winner man. He has won my battle for me. I'm a winner man. I'm a winner man. He has won my battle for me.
Say God of vengeance, God of vengeance, as one man. God of miracles, God of miracles, as one man that will be. Say God of vengeance, Say to yourself, I'm a winner man, I'm a winner man, one man better for me. 